Hey guys! Today is a geometry lesson, and this is one of the ones that Saxon continues year after year. So take a little time and get this down, and uh, you know you'll you, you just keep doing this in algebra one and algebra two. It even shows up sometimes in uh, uh, advanced math and other things like that. So get this down, and it's very interesting. I think uh, the the formulas, but a right circular cylinder basically looks like just like a I don't know like a can of beans or something. I mean a can of soup or something like that. And the reason a lot of these structures that you see are circular instead of like squares or triangles is because they handle you know they handle pressure and weight a lot better. They're they're structurally sound. So they use them. And uh, let's go back though and look at, make sure that you remember the area of a circle. If this is a circle and there is your, um, you know, the center and there's a radius, let's say it's 10 or whatever. What is the area of the circle? In other words, how many, if this is 10, like there are, you know, 10 inches or miles or whatever, how many squares are going to fit into this entire circle? You have to know this formula. The area of a circle is pi, in other words, 3.14, times the radius squared. The radius squared, in this case, would be times 100, right? Because 10 squared is 100. So 3.14 times 100 is 314, approximately. Okay, in other words, if this circle had a radius of 10, there would be 314, about 314 squares that would fit in that entire thing. You're going to use this with finding this information about these right circular cylinders. Okay, you need to memorize this. You ready? We're going to find the volume of the right circular cylinder. In this case, it's a very large canister. Here's a person standing next to it. And this person is very happy because there's lots of bits of little dolphins in his tuna. It's a big can. This is a Costco homeschool family size bit of dolphin tuna can. All right. So let's say this thing is, oh, I don't know. You know what? Let's do this first. The volume, memorize this. You need to write this down. The volume of a cylinder like this is the area of the base times the height. The area of the base times the height. Area of the base times the height. That's it. Okay. You already know this, right? Like if somebody tells you, oh, what's the volume of this, you know, you know, like a Rubik's cube or something, you go, oh, well there's it's three by three, so the area of the base is nine. But wait, there's three levels to it. So one, two, three, nine, two, there's 20, oh, there's 27 cubes that'll fit in this. And if you were just to dump cubes into it, like, like it was an empty box or something, 27 cubes would fit in the thing, right? Nine on the bottom, nine on the second level, nine on the third level, 27 total. Same thing here. You find the area of the base, which this in this case is a circle, and you multiply it by the height. And there you go. And let's say the height of this thing is, oh, let's say this is a little kid. So it's 10 feet tall. All right, let's say the, um, oh, I don't know. Let's say the radius of this thing is three. All right, so let's, in other words, what's the volume? How many, oh, like, I gotta draw a little, okay, it's a little bit of a dolphin tuna. So we got the uh, little, uh, let's see, how do you draw a dolphin? Uh, hold on, hold on. Like a little tail there. There you go, yeah. There's a little dolphin coming out of there, so. Mm, delicious, tastes like chicken, okay. Okay, so let's find the volume of this thing, the area of the base times the height. Well, what is the area of a base of a circle with a radius of three? Well, the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. Well, the radius squared will be three times three, which is nine. Nine times pi, 3.14. If you were to do all that rigmarole, you would find that the answer is 28.26, okay? And then somebody tells you, oh, okay, well, that's 10 units high. Then you'd go, okay, well, that's gonna be two, that times 10, so 282.6. In other words, this means how many cubic feet there are in that entire can. That's it, okay? You know the cubic foot is, right? It's a foot times a foot times a foot, like, you know, a cube this big or whatever. That's what that would mean, okay? That's how you find volume. Make sure you know that formula, okay? Now, the other part we're gonna look at is the surface area, surface area. So when we find surface area of giant cans of, you know, uh, Costco tuna with people, there you go. Um, you just basically need to find what is the surface area here, okay? You also need to find underneath there, right? There's another, like a bottom to this thing. You need to, if, let's say you're asked to paint the whole thing, you need to paint that part too. The weird part is 
this part here. Like how do you find the surface area of the, like the side of the can? You're gonna to have to do some, a little bit of thinking on this one and it'll be pretty simple once we get to it. But first off, if they go, okay, what is the surface area of that right circular cylinder? It's the same exact one. You're gonna go back and go, okay, let's go, okay. I know this part here, the surface area, we already figured a minute ago, was pi times the radius squared. So that's pi times the radius squared, that's gonna be 28.26 and that'll be this part right here, right? So in other words, that will be 28.26. That's the surface area of the base of the can, or the, the, yeah, the can. Also, there will be another one of those at the bottom. So you're gonna to need to multiply this by two. So that takes care of that. The weird thing is, is finding that side. How in the world are you gonna find that side, the surface area? Well, we know the thing is 10 feet high, but how do you find, you know, I mean, like, ah, that's so weird. Well, here's the trick. What you need to do is pretend like this bit o dolphin tuna giant can has a big old label to it right so there is let's say it's a it's a label and it's glued on right here okay so what you need to do maybe just take a razor and cut it and just kind of spread it out and spread it out and then lay it flat if you laid that thing flat this is what your label would look like you know it'd be bit o dolphin tuna like this we know it's 10 feet high right the question is and of course, we could find the area of a rectangle. But the question is, well, how the heck, I mean, how long is that thing? How, how does that, how, how much around is it? The cir you go, oh, wait a minute. Around a circle? Wait a second. I know what that's called, circumference. What's the circumference of that circle? I mean, and that's exactly right, okay? So we know the radius is three. So the formula for the circumference of a circle, we go the circumference is pi times the diameter. Well, if the radius is three, we already said that, what's the diameter gonna be? Six, right? Okay, so that's a six. We can just go, okay, 3.14 times six, and that'll be 18.84 in this case. And then times 10, that'll be oh, 188.4. And we'll take this, and we'll add to 28.26, and we'll add to another 28.26, and there's our surface area, and there you go. The trick is doing two bases, because you have one on the top and the bottom, and the second trick is you need to find these, it's gonna be, you know, it's gonna be a rectangle. The circumference is gonna be this part of the rectangle. This will always, of course, be the height. And you need to find out how far around is this thing. And then there you go, that's all there is to it. So that's how you find the surface area. Okay, so let's go ahead on page 232 and find um, this one. Okay, we'll just pretend it's like piggy parts dog food. Okay, so get, pause it, give it a whirl, and we'll do one at a time. Okay, let's do the volume first. Okay, so the volume is, don't forget your formula, the area of the base times the height. Okay, the radius of this base, they tell us, is 10. All right, and the thing is what, 30 feet high? This is a big old, wow, there's a little kid. Hey, mommy, I got, okay. All right, so the volume is the area of the base times the height. Well, what's the area of a base that has a radius of 10? All right, area equals pi times the radius squared. Area equals 3.14 times uh, the radius squared. That's 100, right? So that's going to be 314. That's the area, okay? That's all we need to know. Okay, now we're going to multiply this by 30. That's the height. So 314 times 30, that'll be 9,420. Okay, make sure you understand what this means. Okay, that'll be, what is it? What, what did I say this was? Um, feet okay so that'll be cubic feet in other words make sure you understand what this means okay 9420 cubic feet means this is a cubic foot right it looks like a cube it's a foot up a foot over and a foot deep or whatever okay that's a cubic foot 900 no excuse me 9420 of those will fit into that thing there you go because in one layer one of these layers there'll be 314 of these will fit in here. We know the area of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, the volume of that will be if it's one layer deep, but it's 30 layers deep, 30 feet, so there you go. Okay, pause it and try the surface area. Okay, surface area, we're gonna find out again, and of course the base is, the radius of the base is 10, and this thing is 30, okay? We already know that this thing, you know, I'm just gonna put this in terms of pi. I'm not gonna even write numbers. Okay, the area of this base is going to be t pi times the radius squared, or pi times 100. In other words, that'll be 100 times pi. 
that part right there. Of course, the bottom of this thing will also be 100 times pi, right? If it's the surface area, all right? So another one of those will be another 100 pi. Now the question is, what is the surface area of the side? Well, we know it's 30 units high. The question then becomes, what's the circumference of this thing? And we know the circumference is pi times the diameter. Well, the radius is 10, so the diameter is 20. So in other words, this part is 20 times pi. Well, 20 times 30, is 600, right? And then that'd be just be 600 times pi. So you got 600 pi here, 100 pi there, 100 pi there, that's 800 pi. There you go. Well, about how much would that be? Well, 800 times 3 is like 8 times 3, 24 and then 100, right? So 2400, so about 2500, that's going to be the surface area. That's all there is to it. Okay. Memorize those two formulas. Make sure you got them down. You can keep using them again and again in, in the future and uh, solving those problems. So, and by the way, if you get like half of the volume and surface area problems wrong for a while, that's very common. So don't give up and don't, don't worry about it. Just look and make sure if you miss one, you look and go, why did I miss that? Okay. Oh, okay. I see what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So make sure you do that. Okay. See you guys next time. Bye.